Hey guys, it's Jim. How you doing? Thanks for coming back and I uh, hope you're doing well today. Uh, this is another Luminar quick tip video and this one is about radial masks. Uh, the last one I, uh, last video I did was about a luminosity mask and I realized that the radial mask to me is kind of the overlooked masking, um, you know, tool, if you will, in Luminar. That's because, you know, I think everybody uses brush masks. I think if you're doing certain things, you're going to be using a gradient mask uh, probably fairly often. Hopefully, you, you, you are using a luminosity mask based on that video, but that leaves radial masks, and I, I, I don't know if they're understood. Uh, I don't see them used a lot, but they're really powerful, and there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. So this is going to be a video about a creative way to use it. So let's jump into it. Okay, so this is just a pub uh, from London. I'm sorry, more London photos, I know. Um, I'm gonna stick a preset uh, preset on there, and I'm gonna stick that preset, and boom, there you go. It's kind of a, you know, kind of a twilighty, kind of blue hour look um, that this has given the photo. There's the before and there's the after. I like the look, but for me, you know, I'm really focused on the center of the photo, and so often what I would do would be create like a vignette and just kind of zoom in, you know, tighten it up, and just kind of focus on that you know, ye old Watling, right? Just uh, just the pub itself. But there's other things you could do, and this is where I'm gonna use a radial mask. So I'm gonna start with a new layer. So I'm gonna click the plus sign and add new adjustment layer, and I'm gonna get a few filters here. I'm gonna get structure, and I gotta look at my notes. I'm gonna get soft focus, uh, which is right there. I'm gonna get fog, which is back up here. I'm gonna get the exposure. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. What's the word? Uh, filter. It's a filter. I have no idea. Um, and I'm gonna get my favorite, which is color balance, and that's it. So what I'm gonna do here is just kind of create, I wanna focus on the center of the, um, of, you know, of the frame, really, but without doing anything uh, uh, around the vignette. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, structure. If you go negative on structure, it really smooths out, kind of blurs the photo. Um, I use that a lot. It's a great way. It actually is an alternative to denoise uh, in many ways. I love that. Um, I'm going to get soft focus and I'm going to use number one and I'm going to go 100 and I'm going to go negative 100 on brightness because I want to kind of darken it. So again, softening up, kind of smoothing out. I'm creating a little bit of a dreamy kind of look here. I'm going to get the dark fog and I'm going to about 28 or 29. Um, and uh, it doesn't look that dark, to be honest, but if you compare it to light fog, right, it, it's a little bit darker. So I'm going with dark because it kind of fits the mood of the photo. And then the exposure, I'm going to go negative here, uh, about, you know, two and, a, two and change, something like that, maybe. Again, I'm just kind of um, creating a mood, I guess, is the best way to put it. And then for color balance, I'm just going to go a little bit left um, on the cyan and red and a little bit right on the yellow blue and i'm going to do that for shadows and midtones and highlights so it's just a small move here just to add a little bit of that blue because i'm kind of accentuating that twilight kind of blue hour look and i want to bring that up in the photo and so something like that so let me show you the before and the after i basically just move the color tones around and there's a pretty decent distribution of shadows midtones and highlights so i, I use all of them Okay, so now I've got a blurry photo with, um, you know, um, it's kind of dark, right? So here's where the radial mask comes in. So in the, I think what a lot of people do is they'll create their edits and they'll brush mask or gradient the sky or luminosity like we talked about, but I want to use a radial mask. And so if you haven't used a radial mask, it, it basically allows you to create like a circle or an oval shape. And so as you can see in the center, it says click and drag to draw a circle. And I am going to start in the center because the center is where I want to focus. So I'm going to do that, and immediately you can see what's happening, right? Um, the first thing to know about a lum uh, not a luminosity mask, I don't even know what I'm talking about now, um, about a radial mask is that um, the mask is applied outside the circle. Um, the in-between area is kind of a gradient zone, and then the inside is no mask at all. And so usually, like when you apply it, that's what it looks like, right? So you can see the gradient zone. Uh, it's 100% out there. It's kind of a gradient, and then it's zero in here. Usually when you apply masks, it applies like a gradient mask. Like when you drop that across the top, the top is, is fully masked. This is kind of inverted in some ways. So the outside is masked, the inside is not. The cool thing though is you can take uh, these at the edges and sort of create an oval shape. If you go just outside, you can see how my cursor is now like a little double-headed arrow. You can twist this around, right? You can grab it inside. You can move it around a little bit. 
Um, you can grab here. So if you grab this, you're changing the shape of the whole thing. But if you grab this, you're shrinking the gradient zone. And so there's a lot of flexibility. And by the way, you can shrink the gradient zone here too. Uh, sorry, not the gradient zone. You can shrink the center uh, circle. Uh, well, it's an oval now, but you get what I'm saying. I'm going to go a little bit more like that. And then let me show you. There's my uh, focal area in the photo. And that's really it. Uh, now I say done. And I've now created, uh, let me turn this layer off. There's the before, right? Bright, vibrant, visible. And truthfully, like I don't care about this stuff outside the frame because it's not really of interest to me. What I like is the front of that pub. I, I just like the name because, you know, old with an E is obviously very British. And it just sounds cool and looks cool to me because I like pubs, I guess. <laughs> Can't help that. Um, so I've really just created a, uh, a moodier interpretation. Now, I could go back and alter this a little bit. I could take the exposure up a little bit. And you can see it's, uh, you know, a little bit less dark out there. I can make more color adjustments. But here's the thing. Once you've applied that radial mask, it is applied. So you can't go back in here. If you click radial mask again, it's going to think you're going to start over. So it's going to start you over with a new one. You can't go back and edit the mask in that way. You can go into brush, click on mask, and you can see it. And then you can paint or erase to make alterations, but it's not the same. So um, my hope is that in the future, we can go back in and edit a radial mask that's already there. Um, and then, of course, you have your other drop-down tools here. If you want to, you know, show your mask or copy it to another layer, invert it, right? If you invert, it's going to do the opposite, right? I don't want an inverted mask because that looks kind of weird. Um, so I'm going to invert it back. But that's it for a radial mask. Very simple, very flexible, but very powerful. So you could use just the exposure slider and a radial mask and then create a vignette of your own without using the vignette filter. I did a video, and I'll put a link in whichever corner it is. Uh, it's maybe a year old, but um, you can take like a street light. Like if this street light, um, if this was a street light and not just like a little uh, side light there, but in that video that I'm talking about, I took a street light and I created a hot spot down below it on the pavement. And all you do is just create a radial mask, increase the exposure, increase the warmth, and it looks like the street light is leaving a pool of light on the sidewalk. So there's a million things you can do. It's very powerful and very fun. And you can see that in just a couple of moments with a few just sort of different sort of filters, I went from that to that, created a moody, kind of fun interpretation of the scene. And let me show you the before and after base single exposure and edited single exposure with a preset and then a bunch of filters applied with a radial mask. That's how it works, my friends. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time and adios.